Good morning, Saints. Good morning, Holly Park Church. First of all, we want to honor and praise the Lord for being here in our presence today. And as we were few in numbers, but we're here to magnify and praise the Lord. We want to celebrate the fact that God sent His Son so we can be free, so we can have everlasting life. And we know a lot of the Christmas celebration is man-made, but we know the real reason. We know the reason that God sent His Son, and we're so grateful. We're so very grateful. Our scripture this morning comes from Isaiah.
presence. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. If there is something that is ailing you, something that is heavy on your heart, we want to pray about it. We know that we can't take your request, but we want to choose it just to let the Lord know as we pray that whatever your need is, whatever you are asking the Lord to bring about in your life, it's if it is according to his will, he is eager and anxious to answer it. Let's look to the Lord in prayer on this morning. Father, we worship you. We adore you. And we magnify you. Not only, Father, do we magnify you. We, we have come to the conclusion and the word of the Bible that we are only here because you have had grace and mercy on us.
were some shepherds staying out in the fields and keeping watch over their flock by night. And an angel of the Lord suddenly stood before them and the glory of the Lord shone around them. And they were terribly frightened. And the an angel said unto them, Do not be afraid. For behold, I bring you good news of great joy, which shall be for all the people. For today, in the city of David, there has been born for you a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. Pray with me this morning, saints. I want to speak to you on this morning the subject of good news. Good news. Father, we bless you. We extol you and we magnify you. We are excited and elated about the good news. Uh, anoint us to teach and preach and speak plainly and clearly to your people. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. You may have your seats. Good news. I remember a time, saints, where if you wanted to catch the news, you had to be home at 5 o'clock. And if you were real brave, you would have to stay up to 11 o'clock. Other than that, Generally speaking, there was a time when that was all the news you were going to get. Now we have news about 24-7. Every time a celebrity slaps somebody and pops up on your phone, there's a news flash. You don't have to wait. Matter of fact, what kind of cable package you get? There's more news channels than anything. Someone is trying to feed us and give us the news that they want us to have. Did you know that the news that is given to you has a motive and a purpose behind it? Did you know that the news that is released to you is not always all the news? Help me, somebody. It is just what they want you to hear. So that even if you don't want to listen, you flip up six or seven channels, there's some more news. <laughs> if you get tired of that news, you flip down another eight to ten channels, there's some more news. <laughs> and even when they have documentaries, I noticed that even when we get to the national news, they'll tell you about all the bad news or how many people have died from the virus, how quickly the hospitals are filling up and all of the negative in the news that almost depresses us. Then at the end of the newscast, they'll have enough uh, boldness to share a story that'll touch your heart. Just a little clip. They'll say, by the way, we found somebody. Help me here. Y'all feel like you watch the news. After we just told you that your mama's dying, everybody dying, and everybody dead. But by the way, we found somebody in the park that was giving out some Girl Scout cookies. Well, isn't that sweet? <laughs> that you really going to now tell me that there is somebody that did something that was noteworthy. But I want you to understand that we need to deal with some news that no one and none of us can escape. Yes, we do. The fact of the matter is, everybody is dying. Period. Yeah, it's, it's not debatable. It does not matter whether you believe God created Mount Rainier or not, you're still dying. It does not matter 
if you are a creationist or an evolutionist, you're still not. Death is something that is not discriminatory. Death don't care whether you're black. Death don't care whether you're white. Death don't care where you was born at. Death don't care nothing about that. No one in history, no, no scientist, no, 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 no study, no, no theologian, no, 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 nobody would argue the fact that everybody, help me somebody, is dying. Matter of fact, Romans chapter 6 says that the wages, help me, I hope you're watching this morning, the wages of sin is death. So whether you believe in God or not, no one is arguing the fact that you die. You, you, that, that's not up on the table for debate. Not only are we dying so fastly, we have decided to spend all our lives to make it look like we're not dying. That, that's why they invented pictures. Y'all going to help me this morning? Yeah, because a picture pauses the death process, sort of. <laughs> yeah, it don't matter what theology you hold this morning. You look at a picture and you look at yourself. There was a moment <laughs> when I used to be young and, and you, 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 you gravitate to the pictures. You ever done that? You look at the picture, look at me. I, there was a time when it looked like I wasn't dying. Y'all ain't saying nothing to me. But no matter what you believe and who you know, uh, time will eventually knock on your door. <laughs> yeah, if you live long enough, uh, circumstances will eventually knock on your door. And whether you be an atheist, whether you be Catholic, whether you be Pentecostal, whatever you are, you're going to have to deal with the fact that you are dying. We didn't come to argue with nobody. And what about what you believe right now? Nobody is escaping death. It's coming. Matter of fact, not only are we dying, uh, the Bible says that the enemy, Satan, has teamed up with death. And he has put a blinder on the world to make you live in a way where you don't expect to die. Yeah, he blinds us to the fact. Have anybody ever called you and told you, do you want to buy your plot early? Don't you feel like hanging up on them? Oh, what's wrong with you? You, 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 you? Don't you want to be prepared? No, man, I'm not talking, talking about that. Calling me, talking about, do I want to buy some spot? No, no, not plan on living. But the Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter, uh, 2 Corinthians in the NLV version, look at this. It says, Satan who is the God of this world, has blinded the minds of those who don't believe so that they aren't able to see the glorious light of the good news. Did you hear what I said? Satan has blinded the unbelievers to make people think there's no, no such thing as good news. That's why bad news is everywhere. <laughs> yeah, he's blinded the fact that there is good news, but if you don't believe that you're dying, you don't need good news. So what he has blinded the world to do is instead of giving you real news and news that is significant, I'll just show you a Girl Scout willing somebody through a hospital room and make you cry, but you're still dying. Y'all gonna help me. What I will do is show you some hungry people on a TV screen and it'll make you cry and want to do something about it, but it'll still keep you dying. What I will do is appeal to your emotions and set you up so that you would chase house, you would chase car, you would chase money, you would chase health, you would chase as long as you can, as long as you don't pay attention to the fact that you are dying. Because I don't want to deal with that. Gyms are full. Young products are full. Anything that stops. Don't, don't, don't get me wrong. I'm anti-life. I just want to tell you what world you live in. Yeah. We got a problem. <laughs> and 
the enemy doesn't want us to know that our problem is death. In the book of Isaiah chapter 7, let me show you something. There was a king, his name was Ahaz, he was the king of Judah. And he had a serious problem. Uh, the northern tribes and, and some other kingdoms was coming against him. And they had teamed up on him. And when they teamed up on this king, he in the southern kingdom of Judah, the Bible says in Isaiah chapter 7, they were scared to death. <laughs> they were shaking in their boots. They didn't know what to do because they were so scared. And, and what they had done was, uh, in this text I want to read you, uh, they had decided to scare Judah with a dummy king. You got to catch me tonight. And the dummy king, everyone was supposed to bow down to this king, honor this king, worship this king, and act like this king could save them from death. The king couldn't save them from death, it would just make you happy. You gotta follow me close. The, the king wouldn't deliver you from somebody murdering you, but it would just make you high as if somebody can't get to you. The, 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 they, were, they had it set up so that if anybody didn't deal with this king, that, 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 that they would be in trouble. And Judah and King Ahaz was absolutely scared to death. Let me read you Isaiah chapter 7. This is what they said. I want to show you this. Verse 6. It says, let us go up against Judah and terrorize it and make ourselves a breach in, in its walls. And listen here. And set up the son of Tebal as a king right in the middle of it. Let's do a little bit of Bible study. We're going to scare Judah to death. Judah has an anointing on it because that's the line of Jesus. Judah means praise. We're going to team up with the world and we're going to set up this king and his name is Tebal or Tebal. Now listen what this means. T-bell means good for nothing. You, you didn't catch me today. I hope you came to celebrate Christmas with me. Are you catching me? We're going to set up T-bell. Before they tell their kids about Jesus, they're going to tell them about T-bell.
the northern tribe had teamed up with this. It was church folk. Wow. Oh, Y'all ain't saying that. Who said you, you better not knock down T Bell? Huh. <laughs> I'm like, that's why you ain't there. Because of T Bell. Oh, yeah. Yeah, see that. See that. And no, don't knock you down. Look at T Bell is a problem if you don't know who Jesus is. I don't want you to get me wrong. <laughs> Yeah, y'all like to help me preach today. Yeah, it's a problem if T-Bell and Nation you think you're just still 19 when you don't get done. It's a problem if T-Bell told you you can live forever, but the wages of sin is there. So I just show you a cupcake picture at the end of the bad news. After I told you everybody was dying, you didn't tell you to go worship T-Bell. But I came to tell you this You might have to turn on T Bell. Come on. Y'all ain't gonna help me preach. Say that. The devil is uh, happy just to mix. Uh, just, just to mix it in a little bit. Just if I could just make. You know when people die and you know nothing you can do about it? What do they do? Uh, We're gonna make you comfortable. Somebody ought to slap me in this church this morning. We're, 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 we're not, you know, you're dying because I just told you for the last hour on the news, everybody's around you dying. But let me put some jingles on and just make you comfortable. Somebody, y'all, don't please don't turn me off. Let, let, let me just make it, let me just make you happy as if I had to wait till the last year of the month to have children. And y'all, as if I had to wait like some stuff was really going to stop me from dying. Like a new car was going to stop me from dying. Like some... Mm -hmm. But when they put the music on and they bring the all it, 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 it makes you think that it's going to be all right. And, and, and but, but Judah and, and trying, but they were scared to death. Watch this. <laughs> so, it gets interesting. He said, Isaiah, I want you to go over there and uh, talk to King Ahaz. Take your son with you. <laughs> and uh, Isaiah had a young son. It was a young son. And, it, and the son's name was uh, Shir Jasha. And the son, when he was talking to King Ahaz, was supposed to be a signal that when the prophet came up to you with a son that was so young on his side, his son's name meant a remnant will return. <laughs> Help me. He said, I want you to take your son with him. And then Isaiah, when you get in front of the king, Ahaz, with his scared self, uh, tell him uh, to ask for a son. <laughs> Can we preach out the Bible? Out the Bible. Yeah, he said, no, tell the king that I am not going to let T-Bell reign over my people. Say that. Tell him that I'm not going to let T-Bell act like he can deliver you from hell. Y'all, yeah, he said, Isaiah, he said, when you get there, I want you to have a little boy with you, your son, and so that he may get the signal up that know how crazy that half the church has got it. No crazy if the northern kingdom has ran out the team. God is decreeing and declaring with a signal and a sign in Isaiah's hand. He said, tell him it will not be. And he was still scared. I, I feel like preaching. Because okay. this text is about to come alive to you. So he said, no, Isaiah, watch what God says. Tell the king to ask me for a sign if I'm going to keep my word. And God is saying, anything. He said, what do you, what do you want me to move the sun? Read your Bible. He said, tell him, tell him to do something. And, and, and so the king was so scared and he was so prideful, didn't know what to do. He said, no, no, I'm not going to ask God for nothing. I wish somebody would just slap me. I know. I, I think I'm going to go and see what T-Bell say about it. What? 
I'm not going to ask him for nothing. And you know what the Lord did? God said, you know what I am going to do? Since you won't ask me for a sign. <laughs> yes, uh, he said, I am going to give you one myself. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He said, sometimes, uh, mm -hmm, yeah, uh, you don't know what to pray for. <laughs> and sometimes uh, the reason why you don't know what to pray for, uh, because you think a uh, T-ball has told you that you're unhappy with what you have in your hand. Uh, so you think my season uh, is about getting everything, uh, but I'm going to override your prayerlessness. I'm going to override your fear. I'm going to override your doubts. And I'm going to give you a sign myself. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, I am. <laughs> yes, yeah. so, so when yeah, uh, he was standing here mm, in front of Isaiah. <laughs> yeah, he said uh, this way. He said, uh, Behold, <laughs> is anybody going to help me this morning? Uh, he said, A virgin <laughs> shall conceive <laughs> and she will uh, bear a son. Oh, you got to stop right there. Hold on, hold on. Uh, yeah, uh, Ahaz. <laughs> yeah, a virgin uh, is going to conceive. Uh, so God uh, was dealing with Ahaz's problem, uh, and in the same sentence, he was dealing with the problems of all time. Come on. Preach it. Did you just hear what your Lord said? The, the, he said, no, don't worry about it. I'm, I'm, I'm going to deal with what you're dealing with right now, and I'm going to deal with death. All time. All right. So the next verse says that before he's eating honey and curds, before he knows what's right from wrong, I'm going to destroy the people that's messing with King Ahaz. Mm -hmm. That was the right down prophecy. Come on. Come on. Huh? That's why I told you to bring your boy. Yeah. Because your boy can hardly talk and he's scared to death. But by the time your boy is running around the house, <laughs> By the time your son, Isaiah, I wish King Ahaz had enough sense to know that I'm going to deal with this right now. But since you brought it up, and since I know that they're going to be scared years from now, and since I know, yeah, that T-Ball ain't never going to be able to deliver nobody out of the grave, guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to give him a sign. <laughs> Yes, anybody in the house. So God said, Behold, a, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and, and he shall call his name Emmanuel. In other words, uh, there's nobody that will be able to deliver you from death. There's nobody that will be able to make you right in my sight. So what I'm going to do is you're going to find a virgin and she's going to have a child and you're going to call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. In other words, I'm going to leave my throne of glory. Yes, I am. Because Never been touched. She gonna have a baby. 
graduate from Harvard. Some theologians, some historians, it's not proven, but they believe that Elizabeth hadn't felt nothing. The Bible says that Mary walked in the room 
And Elizabeth said, Mary, when I heard the sound, Keep trusting the sun. 